The following is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. About 200 years ago, to help celebrate Halloween, people started carving seasonal vegetables like pumpkins and turnips into jack-o'-lanterns, which are still common today. But today we live in a world where people are less superstitious, where Hollywood has perfected the jump scare, where people are desensitized to a carved pumpkin being scary. So I've come up with the idea of adding a jump scare to the Halloween trick-or-treating process. So I'm going to add some capacitive sensing to my door knocker, make sure that people know that they've arrived at a house that really means business. We're going to try and add some amplification and have some sound effects. We're going to dip the lighting. All of this as soon as somebody touches the knocker before they make any other movement. Hopefully, scare the life out of a few people. So with no further ado, let's get started. The outside of my house, there's a few things going on. So obviously we've got the front door with mechanical knocker right in the middle. Also, we have an outside light up here to the side and uh, part of my front door is glazed. So there are some windows which lets light in out from inside. And also to the right hand side of the front door, I've also got my uh, living room window, which I think would make a great rear projection screen for some video effects, which we'll try a little bit later. So what we've got going on is the internal lights, external lights, door knocker, and potentially some video. So the thoughts are, we're gonna get something to control it, and I've got a Raspberry Pi for that. We're gonna add some capacitive sensing to the Raspberry Pi using GPIO building a low level circuit rather than using uh, one of the pre-built capacitive sensing circuit boards or hats. Um, the internal lighting we're gonna to add to GPIO on relays. So these can be switched off and killed dead. The outside light's actually a smart home appliance and uh, I can control that sending UDP commands from a script. So we know that we can control that using a high level interface via network. And then hopefully we can get a nice video that's gonna interact with what's going on elsewhere. So after the lights go out, something that may have been playing on a loop on the lip projected onto the back of the living room blind, we can make react and respond. So maybe uh, a ghost or a ghoul or something heading to the front door to answer it, something like that make it a little bit scary. And that is going to be run from HDMI from the Raspberry Pi. Now to get this working, we've got a few bits and pieces. Now we're going to start with very large power supply. And this is dual voltage so that it can run the Raspberry Pi and the amplification circuitry on its own. I don't need any additionals. Uh, we've also got, of course, the audio amplification circuit, uh, audio amplifier or the op amp, the obligatory brain behind the whole thing, got a Raspberry Pi, got lots of GPIO that can run the inputs and outputs required for the lighting uh, and for the capacitive sensing, network to communicate with the outside light, audio out and HDMI. So we've got everything covered in the one box there. And then of course we've got some uh, passives, in this case some very big resistors and some very little capacitors which will go together to making the uh, Passive circuit. This whole project is only going to work and be scary if the latency is really, really low and the capacitive sensing is really, really sensitive. With that in mind, we're going to spend some time in the next episode prototyping and breadboarding the circuitry, make sure we can get that script firing as quickly as we can, and check that the latency on all of the other features is going to be low, as low as we can get it. So with that in mind, please join me next time and we'll carry on. <laughs>